one came out in 2002 when everyone was like, Wake me up! Wake me up inside! I can't wake up! Wake me up inside! Save me! The game was met with positive reviews and proved to be one of the best games on the PS2, but was really an oddball of a concept. Being a combination of Disney and Final Fantasy and an original plot, people were kind of skeptical if the game would even work because, well, I don't know, you tell me what looks up in this picture. But the game's director, Tetsuro Nomura, managed to capture the style of Final Fantasy and the magic of Disney, and the game just worked by some stretch of a miracle and became one of the most beloved games on the sixth generation, and to me personally. When you walk away, you don't hear me say, please, so and for the record, guys, I am going to be covering the HD Final Mix versions from the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 collection released in 2013 trademark, currently available on PlayStation 3 trademark, because it is the most recent and relevant version, and also this one can skip the cutscenes, praise be to God! <laughs> And I know what some of y'all are thinking, hey Buns, haven't you covered this game before? Well yes, yes I have there, nosy viewer, and it was my first video, which is total crap, so why don't you mind your own business because I'm righting my wrongs. But anyway, if you're new to this game for some reason, here are a few basic tips, tricks, and heads up for people who don't know sh about this game. So you play as Sora, a young, handsome, short, short, leotard wearing teen whose hair knows no limits, living on an island with his best friend Riku, aka guess he's gonna get a baby bit problematic later and is totally just friends platonically with Sora, we promise. No really guys, they're just friends. Trust us guys, it's, it's not gonna happen. And then there's also Kairi, aka the girl. And that's kind of it. But after trying to create a raft, the island is attacked by Heartless, the main antagonist of the game, and you are soon separated from your friends. You get a massive key to beat people over the head with, and eventually meeting up with... <sighs> Donald and... Goofy. Gorsh. Who inform you that the key will help save the world in some way and help them find King Mickey. So off you go to explore the worlds, fight Heartless, and hopefully find your friends. But only Riku and Kairi, because f these other guys. But along the way, you'll meet water that isn't water, but is also water. Light! Terrible camera work. Puppies. Built. Parents you hear from once and then never again. Rated E for edgy. The power of friendship. Weeb hair. All your dizzy nostalgia shoved into a game. Space whales and... Oh my god, dad? Uncomfortable dialogue. Subtitles are only around because of Donald. And, um... Uh... Okay, you know what? From an outside perspective, this all seems really dumb, I know. Having Donald and Cloud in the same game is borderline uncomfortable, but trust me when I say it does work. Now, Kingdom Hearts plot is entirely original, and even though there are tons of Disney and Final Fantasy characters, no. You don't need to know a single thing from those franchises to understand what's going on. Although it does help make things a lot more whimsical if you do. Ooh, hello, ah. <laughs> oh, oh god, no! Oh, turn it off! Can't stress this one enough though, the plot is incredibly important in Kingdom Hearts, although it does like to make up some of its own rules and pull crap out of its butt a lot, and well you like darkness cause we got lots of darkness. The point is, suspend your disbelief and you'll be fine because things get weird. Like yeah, that's a thing, and yeah, that's also a thing, and um... Okay, you know what, no, I'm cutting it off here, stop. This is just awkward. Now, most of the plot is explained in cutscenes, and it's pretty straightforward, at least in this game, but as wacky as the concept of Kingdom Hearts is, it delivers the feels, and is rather emotional in certain situations, creating a new type of Disney magic. When you wish upon a star. Alrighty, so what the heck is you actually do in Kingdom Hearts besides looking dumb with your big banana shoes? To simplify it, the game is a real-time action JRPG with semi-open worlds if you want to get technical and sound super smart about it, but once you get past the tutorial and all that crap, you're gonna gradually unlock new worlds in a baby linear fashion, hang out with some Disney characters, fight some Heartless, kill a few bosses, check out Danny DeVito's steam and hot goat legs, and then lock a big massive hole in the world with your key, then you move on. You know, just normal game stuff. But you do enter many Disney Disney worlds in order to progress the story, from Alice in Wonderland to Atlantica to Weenie Hot Jr. to Agrabah, you got a variety of worlds to unlock and beat, but it's not as simple as just go here and kill the stuff. Each world is unique in design and switches things up, and often the game gets funky and requires you to do certain things from collecting items, activating switches, killing enemies, puzzles, talking to specific people, and then my personal favorite thing, running around for hours not sure what the frick crack you're supposed to be doing! The game has no real mission list 
or objective list or nothing. Nah, man, a lot of the time you'll have no idea what you're supposed to be doing. Like, what do I do? Where is this? Where am I? How did I get here? Oh, God! Are you hitting on me? And while cutscenes or conversations with characters will point you in the right direction, it's not as often as it should be. Now, when exploring, Sora has the option to examine things in the world and interact with stuff. Do it. Always, always interact with everything at least two times. This includes hitting, pushing stuff, giving items to things, and just whatever. Go nuts. But that little question mark that pops up on your head has all the answers, so pay attention to it. But you know you're making progress when the world changes or cutscenes happen, so pay attention to what people are saying, okay? Okay. On top of that, explore every nook and cranny of each world, and often worlds require backtracking and will change stuff depending on what's going on, so get to know the layouts of the world. Now, the worlds aren't as big as you think. They are mostly made up of a few big, open, interconnected rooms, and that's really it. Of course, there are shortcuts that you can unlock, or if you just want to speed stuff up, just throw yourself off a cliff and you'll be somewhere else. It's great, would recommend it. And it's not just backtracking in areas, even after locking a key hole, you'll be able to return to any world at any time to access higher level stuff, get items, and even move the story forward, and yada yada yada. Check out that semi-open world level design, guys. Direction may be vague, but hey, if you're lost, you can always just look up where to go next. This game has been out for a while, guys. The internet is your friend. Alrighty, so gameplay-wise, Kingdom Hearts 1 can kind of be boiled down to press X to win. the game is a lot more complicated under the hood. Well, you can just hit things and wail on people with your big ass key. Being an RPG and all, the game is still based off of numbers and abilities. Killing enemies gains you experience, which makes you stronger and unlocks more abilities as you level up. And you could equip abilities to your heart's content as long as you have the right amount of points, and then you can press X in a totally new way. But seriously, abilities are important if you want to have better attacks, perks, better means of moving around, like dodge rolls, guards, and eventually flying. Abilities aside, as simple as the attacking is in this game, it does require a certain amount of timing, like jumping and attacking at the right moments to block enemy attacks will save your life and is the key to quote unquote getting good. But the jumping. Oh god, the jumping. The game is gonna require you to be jumping around an ungodly amount of time, and you're gonna get a close-up of Sora's perfect buns a lot. Oh yeah. But eh. Most of the worlds will make you jump in order to progress, and it can get really frustrating, just FYI, because I'll be honest, the jumping is kind of crap. On top of the abilities and basic combat, though, you have magic, which is gradually unlocked as you complete worlds, and you got stuff like thunder, cure, wind, stop. <laughs> Stop. Now, magic is limited and uses these big blue bars here, so be sure to use it wisely. Now, even though you can easily get magic back in a few ways, running out is a really, really bad time. Gosh! I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm dodging, I'm dodging, I'm crying, I'm crying! Now, using the magic is as simple as hit the button and do the thing, but you can make little shortcuts in the customization thingy for your quick magic needs, and I highly recommend this. And pro tip, just put cure in the X spot and then arrow somewhere else uh, on that thingy, and then some type of attack magic. I don't know, you pick what you want, it's your kind of game, you do your own thing, that's great, but just put the X where the cure is and you'll be just dandy, I promise. So Kingdom Hearts 1 has a lot of fluff mechanics that you're gonna have to use at one point or another, but are kinda meh in the end. So here we go. The following is cool stuff in Kingdom Hearts 1 that failed to meet expectations and is definitely not as important as the game makes you think it is, but you bet your sweet bippy it's gonna show up everywhere in the game and shove it in your face. Brought to you by Square Enix. Give us all your money or else we'll kill your family. So, most of the game you'll be joined by Donald and Goofy and different Disney characters depending on what world you're in. You can choose your party at any time at a save point, but just know... They're totally useless. And before someone starts complaining that I just insulted their favorite waifu for some reason, your teammates are more support, if anything. They can't really kill, they can't really function, they can't really do anything but heal at terrible times or not at all. <laughs> guys. Great timing there, Donald! Never worry too much about them either. If they die, they die. But real talk, never ever give them items unless it's right, and I mean right before a boss. If you're desperate, I recommend going to the game's customizing settings and changing their AI, but even then you're not safe. Besides your main party, as you progress, you'll gain Disney summons you can use in battle to help you out and for a limited time in exchange for some magic bars. And, uh, be real, you'll forget about them. Listen, while they can be useful in specific situations like Tinkerbell's health and Bambi's items and mostly for bosses and blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably won't use them because most of the time it's just faster to swing the key for dear life and you'll win. But eh, if you like long, sparkly animations, go for it. They're all right. And the worst thing in Kingdom Hearts 1 that you can't escape is the gosh dang gummy ship. <laughs> 
when traveling to a new world, you have to fly the gummy ship from point A to B on a linear track, and, well, to be frank, it's awful. Like, just straight up awful. Like, please tell me someone got fired over this. All you need to do is not die and you win. It's as simple as don't get hit, but it goes at a snail's pace. Wow, check out this epic space adventure and check out these six strats. Wow! The game makes a big old song and dance about you getting special items since you can build ships if you wanna, but it's awful. Like, God help you if you go into the gummy ship menu, it's like defusing a bomb. Oh god, I hit the wrong nine, button, now I'm in stuck eight, on this darn thing. I need to get out of this freaking menu. Six, oh god. Five, Let me out! Four, Let me out of the darn thing! Three, Let me out! Two, I wanna see my family! One. Just really don't bother touching the thing, guys. You don't need it. You do get a warp drive pretty early on in the game, so just use it any chance you get, because, ugh. Okay, let me just tape down the shoot button. I'm gonna get something to drink. So as you get more powerful and explore, you'll gain more items and keyblades. Now, don't just ditch keyblades for the newest, latest, and greatest, and the most aesthetically pleasing ones you get. Oh, finally! Read up on what each keyblade does, because having more magic bars here, or more critical attacks there, could be more effective. Now, healing items are kind of straightforward. You hit a button, and ta-da, you did it, you use the thing. But just make sure you have some on you at all times. But besides those, you'll be collecting a ton of random items from enemies and chests that you can sympathize with the little Google McMoogle people for really good items and the occasional weapon. Some of the items can be really obnoxious to get, but it's worth it, I promise. And if you want to know what all you need, links below to get your kupu on. On top of that, around the world are little symbols called trinities that you can trigger for items, pathways, and money! All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind. You gradually unlock what color trinities you can use, so keep track of where they are so you can revisit places and get the goods. And some are used to access areas to progress the story, so like... You know, that's kind of important. And keep in mind, you can only use Trinities while you have Donald and Goofy in your party, just FYI. Also, when it comes to extra stuff, Kingdom Hearts has got you covered. The game has a plethora of extra doodads and totally optional crap that you don't need to do, but you should totally probably do it. The first is the Colosseum area in Hercules World, where you can fight Heartless and people for items, Keyblades, experience, and crappy trophies. More matches open up as you progress through the game, and you can get some pretty high-level stuff, so be sure to check in often and then cry because of you-know-who. Or not, if you've never played this game, that's okay, but you know who I'm talking about, ladies. Now, there are also torn pages around the world that you need in order to complete Winnie the Pooh's book world in Merlin's house. Now, like I said, totally optional, the world is mostly mini games, and you get some decent items out of it, but uh, you mostly just hang out with Pooh. I mean, that's kind of neat. Of course, every time you hang out, he gets thrown or launched into the sky for some reason, but it's cool to watch. Like, there he go. Wee. And the last totally optional, but you should definitely try to do a thing, is collect all 99 Dalmatians around the world, and then you can return them back to their home in Traverse Town for goodies and magic upgrades. And if you want to find all the pups, links below, because according to the game, around three pups are shoved into a chest for some reason, so get going, because air is kind of limited in those things. Right now, there's an animal who needs you. Your call says, I'm here to help. Alrighty, so here are a bunch of tips and things you should know before you get started. When you start the game, you get a choice of picking and throwing away a weapon, and according to many internet sources, pick the shield and give up magic. Or don't. Honestly, it's not that detrimental. Do what you want. Also, in the beginning, you get to pick a few answers to three questions. Pick all the middle options or the first. Or don't. Honestly, it's not that detrimental either. Or is it? No, just kidding. It's not. You'll be fine. Just pick an answer. Go for it, kiddo. You can fight people on the island if you wanna, but you don't need to. Also, Riku can go choke on his own palpo fruit if you ask me. You can only open chests when there are no enemies around, so if that thingy's red, no chest for you, sweetie. Be sure to switch out your equipment with newer, better stuff to max out your stats. Ability points are not a done deal, so no ability is permanent and you can switch stuff around at any time. Equip limits in your abilities for special strong attacks and low-key strike rate is pretty good, just throwing that out there. And don't forget about shared abilities in your group because you will need them. You might come across these really weird mushroom heartless in certain areas randomly. Don't attack them, but play their little magic game for really rare items. But kill the little purple ones because screw those guys. Death isn't much of a penalty, but remember to save often, you dank, there is no autosave. Go clockwise when you first get to pick world and make your way around it. Atlantica is technically optional. Just throwing that out there. Stock up on items as much as possible and save better items for bosses if you can. Getting killed a lot? Go grind and explore past worlds. Doesn't hurt and hey, you might find something cool, you scrub. The game has a bunch of fun extra bosses, but they are pretty high level stuff, so make sure you're- <laughs> 
to Aerith in the second visit to the Hollow Bastion Library to get Kiragra. Very useful. You need certain Disney party members in some of the worlds to access some stuff. If you want to get back to Monstro's world, fly manually to Halloween Town because the game will never give you what you want and you need to trick it into sending you there. Haha, -ha, this is what I wanted all along! After beating Agrabah, head back to Traverse Town Accessory Shop for a little thingy and also to avoid a plot hole. Only use power-up items on Sora and no one else. They don't deserve power-up love. So, while Kingdom Hearts has some weird design quirks and it's just kind of confusing to look at sometimes, the fact that this game works as a concept is a miracle. You don't see oddball games like this often, and it may not be perfect, but by making the Disney World accurate and unique and giving the game that Final Fantasy depth, Kingdom Hearts is that type of game that just grabs you and really makes you feel the magic, even after years, and I mean years later. And I'm getting a little teary at just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, this is some good stuff, guys. And I hope this Basics Beginner's Guide makes your gaming experience a little better. So please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Hey, how's it going? Did you like this video? Well, if you did, why don't you go watch another one, you nerd? Also, why don't you go follow me on Twitter so you can keep up the date on what's gonna happen next? Wanna watch me get the footage I need for these videos? Head on over to my Twitch so you can see me play games and talk to chat where no one is safe. And this episode's Patreon shadow goes to Matrix Master. Thank you so much for your support and don't forget to make it rain. If you wanna support me directly and be a major part of making these videos, go pledge to my Patreon and waste your money on YouTube trash. If if you have any tips for this game or any future games, please leave me a comment, tweet me, or send me a message. Later, you big nerds!